Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Jason. This is Art of Creation Homestead. We're out here today. Middle of the day, so it's a little bright. Um, but we're going to do our devotional this week. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching this faithfully. I do appreciate it. I love all your feedback. And uh, you guys bless me. Hopefully this is blessing you. And hopefully we're all just encouraging each other along the way. And getting stronger for the Lord Jesus. Right? So, let's get into this today. Uh, last week I talked about... Um, a living sacrifice and how you and how a sparrow how you're worth more than a sparrow um because jesus had talked about how a sparrow was so taken care of by him and talked about living sacrifices and things of that nature um so let's just continue that a little bit so romans 12 1 romans 12 1 and 2 a uh, very familiar passage for for people who've been around for a little bit especially and um it says that paul said to the romans he said Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay, so verse 1 there, he talked about in view of God's mercy. Okay, so let's just cover that real fast. Um, in view of God's mercy, he's talking about in chapter 11, Okay, in chapter 11, he was talking to the Romans. Okay, so the Romans were Gentiles, correct? They're not Jews. Um, he was talking to the Romans about mercy, about God's mercy for uh, the Gentiles and the Jews. Okay, so he's just saying, hey, God's have mercy on you. He's going to have mercy on them. And it's just God's full of mercy. So then he ended with the doxology. And then he said, so therefore in view of God's mercy so as you see God's mercy with God's mercy in full sight that you can that you obviously see what's what it is and who it's for okay he said I urge you to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice okay so living sacrifice we talked about that last week how uh, sparrows were sold at the temple in the temple courts uh, for for sacrifices for people who couldn't who did not have livestock on their own okay so we talked about living sacrifice there um, but I had, an, I had an image, okay, of a living sacrifice um, that we'll, I won't go through for a minute. Um, so we talked about how a living sacrifice and how when, according to Jewish law, when, that when a, when a uh, person made a sacrifice, that the, that the aroma was pleasing to God, okay? And then Paul wrote uh, that, that we are the aroma of Christ to God and, and to this world, okay? But so that we that that we are a pleasing aroma to God, okay, as a living sacrifice. But now, bear with me for a moment while I cover while I go through this my my vision here. I imagine that as a living sacrifice. So if so I'm, if I'm to be sacrificed, I'm going to be burnt, right? Okay. So if I'm going to be burnt, that's that's what a sacrifice was. It was burnt. Okay. There were put on open flame and burnt not just killed but then they were burnt that's how the aroma was 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 lifted to God essentially so if I'm gonna be a living sacrifice so I'm living but I'm sacrificed so then if I, what is being burnt what is being burnt would be the world that's that's in me you know, my flesh you know the my fleshly desires the the bit of sin that is in my life so those things are being burnt off of me and so, if I'm to be burnt, then the aroma that's pleasing to God would be the smell of this world leaving my life. So, as a living sacrifice, I'm offering to kill, okay, I'm offering to kill off my fleshly desires. I'm offering to kill off myself. I'm offering to kill off my selfishness. I'm offering to kill off the things that are not pleasing to God, the things that God does not desire for us the things that are disobedient to God it's my sin right so my sin is what I'm offering up my worldly thoughts my worldly um, actions everything every bit of this world that's in my heart is what I'm offering to kill off and so I'm sacrificing that on the altar to God and that's being burnt off of me hopefully daily <laughs> that's, that's the goal right is the daily we're getting stronger for Christ so that's being burnt off daily so then that is the aroma that's being lifted to God that's pleasing to him so that's my that was my image of a living sacrifice that I'm living but I'm dying 
I'm living, but I'm dying. And that's what God desires for us. Is so now we see now we see God's mercy in full view. Now we see it right in front of us, and we understand God's mercy a little bit. Not that we can comprehend it because we can't, but now that we understand a little bit of it, that He's got mercy for everybody, which is love, undeserved love. All right. So then I'm offering myself, my body, as a living sacrifice to burn off this world to God for His for an offering of worship. So He said that's our spiritual act of worship. But then he goes on to verse 2 to talk about, in my opinion, <laughs> how we become a living sacrifice. He says, do not conform any, lo any longer to the pattern of this world. You know, there's, you can think about it in, in, in uh, several ways. Pattern, maybe, um, for people who like to sew, um, there would be a, a pattern that you follow, correct, that you cut out. It's a pattern that you cut out to sew that pattern. They give you a pattern to sew, a pattern to for crocheting and things of that nature but also you can think about a mold you know you're trying to wedge something you're trying to put what God has created into the mold of this world but no matter what you're conforming you're giving taking what God has made and you're making it fit into something that God didn't make something that God doesn't desire something that is against God's will so if you're conforming to the pattern of this world you're, you're taking what God wanted and wedging it into to that, to a mold. I think I think of it maybe like a little kids game that has the shapes and the like. You have the shapes in your hand, like the little wooden shapes or plastic shapes, and you're trying to match them up to the to the slots that go in on this board. And you're taking a triangle, trying to put it into the square. Taking a circle, trying to put it into the triangle. It doesn't fit, right? So you're, you're trying. If you were trying to make it fit, you're going to take it and just try hammering it in until it fits. And it, if it fits it breaks <laughs> right if you actually get that block in there then it's going to break which is kind of what would happen is that you're trying to take what god wants what god had for you his desire for your life his will for your life and trying to wedge it into something that the world gave you instead and it's going to fall apart it's just simply your life's simply going to fall apart if you try to wedge it into something the world has for you rather than following what god has for you that's plain and simple okay um, the hardest times in my life I've ever had are the times that I've tried to do it on my own. I'm trying to wedge what God had for me into something that the world had for me. And it just doesn't work out. So now if we're going to say we're not going to conform into the pattern of this world, we need to see what the pattern of this world is. We've got to recognize what the pattern of this world may be. And it's very clear. I think the Bible is very clear about what these things are. Uh, several passages um, talk about the acts of the sinful nature, the things of this world, and, and passages such as that. And it's very clear, it talks about selfish ambition, deceit, lying, um, <clears throat> sexual immorality, um, just all kinds of things that are in the heart, right? These things are in the heart. So we got to take these things that are in, in our hearts, recognize them, and don't conform to it don't live our lives according to those things so the pattern of this world is evil the plan is simple and it's deceitful and you know it says that the, the, the devil himself masquerades as an angel of light he's masquerading he's deceiving put a mask on his face so you can't see who he really is can't see his real desires can't see what his real motives and ambitions are for your life and we can say the devil's a human or not a human but the, the devil is a living being which is real that's true and we can say that um the actions the selfishness the sexual immorality lies deceit murder envy theft whatever you want to talk talk about we can say those are living actions of the enemy that's acting inside of our lives. And that those, those actions are also meant to deceive. They're from the world. Because what does this world want to tell us these days? They want to tell us sexual immorality is okay. They want to tell us that selfishness is okay. Because you got to think of yourself first. They want to tell us that, um, there's multiple ways to God that they won't tell us that hey Christian the Christian way is not is not real. They won't tell they won't call us um, they won't tell us that we hate people. 
they won't call us racist. They won't say that we're scared of certain individuals. All these things are lies. But they're passive aggressive backhanded lies to get us to change our to get us to conform to their pattern and not to God's pattern. So we gotta recognize what those patterns are. So therefore, in view of God's mercy, offer your body as a living sacrifice, killing yourself off. And do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Don't wedge yourself into what the world wants. Don't take what God made and put it into what the world wants of it. Recognize. Recognize what that is. Understand those things, that they're deceitful manners, that they are meant to harm you. And then, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Because then you can see your thing clearly. You sacrifice yourself. You've given it to God. You're burning off yourself daily. You're getting better for Him daily. And you can truly see what's going on in front of you, what this world is doing, and what God wants to do. So then after you see that, after you recognize those things in, in front of your face, inside of your life, and inside of your own heart, then you will be able to see what God wants for you. So many of us are confused about what God wants for us. What's God's will for my life? What does God want of me? Well, you got to start by being a living sacrifice, burning off yourself, and recognizing the evil and the pattern of this world that is trying to make you conform. So don't conform to it. You conform to God's will, and you, you conform to what God's, to God's plan, then you're going to be able to see it clearly. You're going to be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So don't be confused about that. If we're confused about that, then we need to clean ourselves up, right? Or allow God to work in our lives a little bit more. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. If you have prayer requests, comments, praise reports, whatever, please leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear, for, love to hear for, from you and pray for you, okay? My name is Jason. <laughs> this is our Recreation Homestead. I love you guys. God bless you and goodbye.